Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. I'm your host, Chris Granger. Let's jump in. All right, we're excited to have everyone here today and hoping that you're liking the new format of Eco Ask Why. No, it's a little bit different than what we've done in the years past, but we're just having a lot of fun digging deep and trying to provide you with information and insight that's going to help you grow. And we started off this new series of, of this format with the installed asset analysis. And we really broke that down and what that looks like. So hopefully, you know, if you're, if you're interested in installed asset analysis, we have the team ready and capable and willing to jump in and serve. And then we started talking about mastering system designs and going, taking things from the concept to, to, rea- to reality, which builds a lot of tools within the electric equipment company that we use to help you design the most efficient systems out there. And then last month, we talked about a deep dive into smart motor protection. And for something for me, that was just close, so close to my heart as someone who's worked in closely with motors for electric motors for years and ran our motor service division was, was, was blessed to be able to be a part of that, to have that conversation around smart motor protection and how the technology has changed. Wow. What an incredible one. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to some of these recent episodes, go back and check it out in our catalog. It's a great way to get connected. Okay. Now today, what we're going to be talking into, we're diving deep into industrial automation. And we're talking specifically with around IIoT solutions. Okay, that's the Industrial Internet of Things. Okay, and we'll be really focusing on how revolutionizing manufacturing starts with efficiency and connectivity. And, and there's a lot of innovation that's taking place to get us there. So we're going to get right into it because there's a lot of information to look at here to hopefully help you a more prepared and equipped uh, user of this technology in the future. Because we know if we look at that the, the tapestry of industrial automation, when the advent of indust- the industrial Internet of Things happened, that was a revolutionary time. And it really has created such a ripple inside manufacturing because it's reshaped the very fabric of how processes are done, how they're thought of, and then how they're at, both at the end of the day, how they're executed and, and learned from. So being a distributor at an electrical equipment company, we've been in business for almost a hundred years. So just think through all the different evolutions we've walked beside with manufacturers on that have forged that path. One IO point at a time, one relay, one wire at a time. To me, that's the cool part. It really is. And we see over and over again, as more and more data, more and more IO points, the need for more information happens. There's a need to connect this data and systems. And that's led us to partnerships with many businesses out there. One of them is called HMS Networks. They have innovative solutions like the E1, any bus that are leading the charge and connectivity and interoperability solutions. Because this is crucial. You have to be connected, but you also have to be able to operate on multiple systems. And as we delve deeper here today, we're in talking about industrial autom- automation, we're going to explore some of these nuances of I- IIoT. And we're going to think about the future. I'll really put your put your future vet, uh, vision casting caps on for us for a minute. And we're going to look at the role of connectivity. It's not just a necessity but as, tr- as a strategic imperative as you move forward, okay? So we're going to dig right into this. Let's get going. So let's talk about the evolution of industrial, of automation, rather, in industrial manufacturing, okay? So that there has been an evolution. So if you think about automation in industrial manufacturing, uh, it, it's been one of, of ingenuity, of progress, of, of constant changing, and it can trace its roots way back to a time where the plant floor was dominated by hardwired relays and control systems, right? That's And I think about the days of the plants that I'd go to. Uh, there was an old textile plant in the hometown I grew up, and there were lots of cabinets and relay cabinets and filled with wires going everywhere, right? And that's how it, that's how it worked, right? In its infancy, automation looked basic. 
It was a lot of uh, a mechanization. And, you know, there's lots of things. This did this did this did this. And you could you could literally see how the how the logic worked. It was effective, but not the most efficient. So as things had started evolving, improving efficiency, and, and and that was the focus. And that's what we see today, right? Because we see the sophistication in the technology that we have. And you start as you start thinking about technology and in the, in the, in the, on the plant four. Automation began advancing as well. And it began from those hardwired controls to the integration of PLCs, programmable logic controllers, and brought a new level of flexibility and precision to the plant floor directly. We see that. And this, this transformative, transformative journey continued with the innovation of like CNC control systems and that, that enabled uh, automation with complex tasks in machining and manufacturing right there on the plant floor. But when you start thinking about it, sit back, the real watershed moment for industrial automation arrived when you started having network systems. This is what, this is, this is really cool. Machines began communicating with each other. And this changed the basic assumptions of everything. And right there, we saw the birth of an industrial internet of things. So this is where we now have the need for data because that is data. The way we use it is the lifeblood of, life of industrial processes. So we, so we kind of see that evolution. So it's going to, it's come a long ways, right? Blessed all those, the days of the relay logic where we could go replace relays and things like that and, and, and trace stuff out. Now you could, you can just jump on a network. And you can tr you can see what's going on. You can make enhancements. You can make improvements. You can correct items. It's it's really just fascinating when you think about it, right? So now now let's think about it from this standpoint. You had the rise of IIoT, right? But there at the core, there's a parallel to its cousin, probably its big cousin, consumer IoT. Let's think about that for a second. So you have uh the these these I IoT type of technologies and, and requirements on the plant for now. And it's gained prominence, but its roots, if you really think about the roots, they were intertwined as the industrial Internet of Things, the IoT, impacted our daily lives. It really did, right? And start thinking about this. The present of the presence of your smartphone and the smart devices that we have in our homes, that ushered in a whole new era. I'm not sure if it's always good, but it, always, it ushered in a new era one way or the other of connectivity and our user experience. And we started having different expectations. We just did. Because at the things that we experienced in our personal life, we wanted to see that in our industrial manufacturing environments as well. Right? We wanted that. So that experience of the homeowner began to change. And their unique experiences from the, from the plant user did well, did as well. Think about it from the homeowner standpoint. You have the smart thermostat, right? He has the smart receptacles. And then you could, you start thinking about the way our, our homes are connected now with advanced surveillance, security systems. These systems are relatively cheap, right? Compared to what they were 10, 20 years ago. And this expectation of being able to listen, to connect, to understand what's going on with the plant and inside your home at all times, that started shifting from home sweet home to home to, to now we're home sweet connected home, right? The whole shift changes. And we start thinking about these interfaces that we deal with every day now, right? Where we have real time access to data, seamless connectivity. I mean, kids can connect to stuff, right? And consumers are just enjoying it in our daily lives because it, it's it's creating better experiences for us. And guess what? That all of a sudden started creating the same type of expectation for plant managers and industrial operators. It did. And this shift necessitated a response from manufacturers to start integrating this consumer-driven advancements into industrial processes. That's what we see. The smart factory. Boom, it started coming out. We did. We started mirroring the conveniences of efficiency that I, I that IoT had brought into our homes onto the floor. And manufacturers, they started chasing, facing the challenge of this transforming traditional 
you know, siloed systems where you just did this one process here. And this is all you focused on to now everything's interconnected. You have interconnected ecosystems where machines communicate in real time. And we start thinking about how this is kind of mirroring the, inter the interconnect interconnectedness of our devices. It really is mind blowing. Again, you have devices like Ewan, Anybus Solutions from HMS. They have enablers to be able to make these, these connections happen in the first place. Because you got to have infrastructure. That infrastructure has to be there to bridge the gap between legacy systems and the evolving industrial landscape. And it's just really interesting when we start thinking about the history of it and the rise of, of IIoT and how everything ties together with our IoT expectations these days. It was just a matter of time. It was going to hit the plant floor. And that kind of leads us to two key points that we need to think about if you're in your if you're, if you're in a manufacturing plant today that you must address. And when you look at manufacturers, you start evaluating vendors, you start talking to your distributors. Hopefully you're talking to an electrical equipment company. We'd love to come in and help you. Think about connectivity and interoperability. Because as you had that I IoT rise more and more and more. You had a lot of different manufacturers and solution providers contributing unique technologies and protocols that the plant that you could use on a plant floor. Okay, which is cool, but this created a little bit of a challenge because you there there wasn't always standardized data formats and communication protocols. So that really hindered a lot of this seamless interoperability. That's why you can hear a certain well, this manufacturer can only plays with this manufacturer. Oh. There's a little bit of truth to that because manufacturers found themselves kind of grappling with each other with all these different proprietary systems that could not communicate with each other. At the end of the day, that's not getting stuff done. So recognizing the need for a common language on the plant floor, industry leaders and organizations, they advocated for standardization. That was huge. That was a big, big deal. So you had common communication protocols, such as Ethernet IP, right? And that became pivotal to achieving interoperability. Then you have solutions like the, we've talked about HMS's E1 and Anybus. They have a commitment to open standards. And they position themselves as a facilitator of this interoperable landscape. Because when you start thinking about it, these solutions not only support various industrial protocols, but also provide gateways that act as translators. So devices are different with those different communication standards that you had back in the day. Maybe they can be able to exchange data more efficiently and effortlessly. And this created, when you start thinking about connectivity and interoperability, a unified interoperable industrial ecosystem where you have these machines with these different manufacturers Everything seamlessly connects. You have a, at that point, you have an agile, responsive manufacturing environment. And that is really what you're after. You want that system that you have to be reliable. We know that. But it also has to be connected. It's going to give you the data that you need. And you don't want a, bu a bunch of hoops to jump through. This is why solutions like this matter. Then you start thinking about the data. Because it's all about the data, right? Because you have this interconnectivity of devices. You have the standardization of protocols, right? You that we, we find ourselves often on the plant floor, flooded, flooded with the, just data that we just can't d do enough with, right? It's just, it's coming in faster. We can never do anything with. So then you had IIoT solutions that became not just conduits, but managers of that data to try to put that data in the right places so we can make the best informed decisions in the moment. And we start thinking about the volume, the sheer volume of data generated on the plant floor each day from machine, machine performance metrics to environmental conditions. This creates some great opportunities for sure to learn, to grow, to adapt, to take, to take the, make the adjustments in your process to really be as efficient as possible. But it also creates challenges. Right. Because it really does. Because once you start equipping advanced data management capabilities on these machines, you better be able to move that data where it's needed the most, where you can start using historians and integrate into to cloud solutions to be an integral part of your automation system. Right. Because so, so to think about that, you need to make sure you're having the right tools in the right places to extract the meaningful information. So you got to get the data that you want. 
But then you have to move it to where you can actually make better decisions and talk about, you know, predictive maintenance and optimization pro- of processes and uh, enhancing your overall operational excellence. You have to be able to do all that. You have to get that data in the right places. And this is where the data deluge and all, being able to understand the data on a better standpoint matters. Because another th- thing to consider, we're set, you have – as an industrial manufacturer these days that you didn't have to really think about 20, 30, 40 years ago is cybersecurity, right? You having this data, you put this data on this cloud, is it safe? So making sure you have solutions and providers and manufacturers out there and partners like ECO who understand this need and help and let us come alongside of you to incorporate the robust security measures. Okay. Because you need to make sure that your data is, 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 it has complete integrity, first and foremost, but also it needs to be confidential, right? Because industrial data is sensitive. You know, it can be your, it's, 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 it's your internet intellectual property, right? So that IP matters, right? So secure remote access, encrypted communication, proactive cybersecurity features, they have to be pillars that you are not going to waver, right? They have to be in place to stand against those cybersecurity threats. They're, those threats are real. So when you start thinking about the manufacturers that you're partnering with, make sure that they embrace these ideas as well when they start looking through the solutions for the IIO, IIoT, okay? Now, let's think about the future and, and, and think about some trends and predictions as we move forward. So as we kind of cast out, we'll do some future casting and start thinking about industrial manufacturing landscape, several trends start emerging. They do. They come off. They come up as catalysts for future evolution, particularly in industrial automation. So you have items like edge computing. So you have that's characterized by decentralized data processing, and it, that promises in itself to reduce its lac- to reduce latency, right, and enhance real time decision making capabilities. That's real. That edge computing solutions are out there. So start thinking about that. This is going to be part of your industrial landscape moving forward. Then you have artificial intelligence. Let's just be real. AI is going to hit the floor. It already has in many places, but it's coming. And it's woven directly into the fabric of IIoT, right? It has the potential to transform data into actionable insights. And when you start thinking about driving efficiency and innovation, AI is going to be at the, at the core of a lot of stuff. When you start thinking about implementing 5G technology further, that really does a lot for your plan as well because it's it's that's the foundation of IoT, right? Because you want to make sure you can have fast, more reliable communication between these connected devices. And so I'm telling you, as you future cast and start thinking about what's to come and where do you want your plan to be in the future, the different types of technology, and I'd be like to get this data. What about this data? How can we make this machine more connected? You may get overwhelmed. And I want to encourage you, the team at Electrical Equipment Company, continues to provide and to work with partners such as HMS to help you understand the different solutions available to address this IIoT initiative, initiatives. Innovation is happening very fast. And the commitment to staying ahead of these technological changes, that's where we live. Because we want to make sure you, as the industrial manufacturer, can confidently navigate the evolving landscape and start leveraging, using some of this technology in your operations that's available that just a few years ago wasn't. So I really want to, uh, are here for you because I want you to think about as we as, as we kind of come to the end of this conversation, the journey from industrial, historically the way stuff was done with industrial automation to the present is really a testament to the industry that itself, its adaptability and its resilience. I mean, I think about my dad as a as a industrial technician back in the 80s and 90s and the technology that they had available and how that evolution changed. I mean, at one point they had a PLC on everything except the Coke machine. I mean, it was crazy just to see how all that connectivity, all the blue hose that's inside those plants. And now if you look at a manufacturing plant today, that is the expectation. It really is. You start thinking about, man, all these devices are connected now. And, and I'm able to pull data from this, like we talked about last month, this simple motor starter 
that I never could imagine getting this amount of data from before. And I get it on all my motors. And I can pull this into historians and, tr- and get and run trends and do predictive uh, analysis. And it's just when you start thinking of it that way, it's just really cool sometimes just to sit back and think about the technology. Because so much of this technology is a strategic imperative for our growth. And as you as you start navigating the complexities of the fu- of the future and data management, and interoperability, and cybersecurity, you got to have solutions and more important solution providers at your disposal that's going to work alongside with you as a partner to help you make the right decisions. And again, that's what we do at Eco. We have experts designed in each one of these areas. Maybe you have a question like we've been talking about this for this month, industrial automation. We have those guys and girls ready to come support you. Maybe you want to talk about motor circuits. Well, we're ready there as well. How about motor control centers? Yep, got those resources available. How about power management and switch gears? How about how about uh, uh, motor relays? How about uh, smart meters? How about HMIs? Whatever you're thinking about from an industrial automation standpoint, we have team members trained and ready. And most of the time, locked and loaded with demos to bring and show you. So this is what it's all about. Because edge computing, artificial intelligence, 5G, all this innovation is coming, and we are here. We're learning with you. We're learning to be able to bring out the the, the best, the latest, the greatest to help you because we are unwavering in our commitment as solution partners with you because we want to give you an advance, an edge on all the different competitors that you're fighting against, and we want to be your partner through this transformative journey. So as you start thinking about IIoT and everything in front of you and the right solutions, industrial manufacturers can not only adapt, but you can thrive in your pursuit of excellence. This is not something you have to do kicking and screaming. You get to do this willingly because it's going to make you better. And understanding the different technologies, this is what industrial distributors like electrical equipment company do best. So I'd encourage you to reach out to us. Let us know if you if you have a particular solution or a process that you need help with. We're here. We're ready to serve. We're ready to jump in, to, to hit it head on with you, to give you some wisdom, to give you some insight, to give you some discernment, to give you some ideas, to help you think outside the box. We even have innovative labs in place where you can come. You can try out. Try it for yourself. Let's put your uh, uh, your case study against this technology. Let's see if this technology will give you what you need to make the best decisions moving forward. That's what it's about. You're going to start asking more from your vendors and, and, and trusting their expertise to make the best decisions moving forward. That's what it's all about. So hopefully you're enjoying the new format of Eco Why. We definitely are. I'm enjoying doing it. It's just cool to have Eco Why back again. Again, you, want, you can give us a rating and review. That helps for sure. Share this out. With other man, with other, uh, with others in manufacturing, would love to just you know take this message and get it out as many people as we can. If that's something we can come help you with, we have we have team members ready to come to your industrial manufacturing site. Particularly if you are in the southeastern United States, that's where we are pro- pro- predominantly served the be- the most. So let us know if we can serve you there. If we can come, we can help you. Again, we have labs. We have labs. In Virginia, we have labs in North Carolina and South Carolina. So we have labs that you can come to where you can get hands-on. So if you're interested in that, we'll put a link in the show notes for you to go check that out as well. So lots of solutions, lots of experts, lots of manufacturers and different types of solution providers that can help you make the best decisions that you can moving forward. So we'll love to help you, love to serve you, love to help you uh, just jump in any way possible. So again, thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. And if you enjoyed this one, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. It, it really would be uh, interesting to, to hear your feedback. And if you have a topic or an area that you'd like some 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 support or expertise in, and you, maybe you want us to do an episode about it, Send it. Let us know. Send us an email. Connect with us. We'll have links here in the show notes for you to go do that. Okay. So have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember to keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. 
Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.